Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia aka Crafty Owl here on the Cat Scrabbiness channel to show you how I'm going to create three quick and easy Christmas card using some of the newest Cat Scrabbiness goodies. I hope you'll stick around and see what I'm going to create. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to the channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. There's a whole team of us who share their creations here, and I know that you're going to love it if you subscribe. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. We're so glad that you're here again. For today's video, I knew that I wanted to use the Ugly Sweater Slimline Paper Pad from Cat Scrappiness. So I thought what better to do than use the Dress Up Quokkas with the Ugly Sweater add-on. I will have all of the Cat Scrappiness products linked in the description box below so you can go check those out. When I start the process, I will let you know any more products I add, but if I do leave you with any questions, you can always leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Speaking of process, let's go ahead and get crafty. To get started, I'm going to be doing the stamping. Later, I will be doing a little coloring with alcohol markers, so I chose ink and cardstock that will work with those. I set up one of the kawakas and the coordinating sweater for that one onto this first piece of cardstock, and then I inked that up and stamped it. Now I did use my Misty because then I can just bring in that next piece of cardstock and stamp these in the same exact place. Now once I have all three of those stamped, now I'm going to start decorating the sweaters. For these, I'll be using various accessories with the stamp set. I chose a different one for each sweater. And these I did have to set up individually and it took a little bit of time to get them just right. But in the end, I think they turned out looking so cute. I know they call these ugly sweaters, but I'm not sure why. The markers I'm going to use today have three different shades in one marker. So I chose a brown for the body of my quokka, a light pink for its ears, and kind of a brownish gray for its nose. Now I am no master colorer. I usually just put down the lightest color all over, go in with the medium for kind of an outside shadow, and then do the darkest areas with the dark color, and go back in with the light one and blend everything out. But again, I'm just going to show you quickly how I did this. I won't be giving many tips because, hey, I'm still learning myself. Once my kawaka was all colored in, I brought in some different markers and colored each of the sweaters. Now I'm only going to show you coloring one kawaka and one sweater, but basically I left all of the sweaters white and then just colored in, you know, like the sleeves, the neckline, and the hem with the single color, and then I colored in the image very quickly. I did realize after my sweater was all colored that I needed to bring back in my browns and color in the hands that showed up in the sweater. I colored the rest of the images off camera and here's a quick little look at that. Now one thing to keep in mind, you would not have to color the entire kawaka because the sweaters will cover up most of their body. But I didn't think having a little extra coloring practice was bad. I took these off screen with the dies and cut each of those out. Once those were all die cut, I brought in my art glitter glue and adhered a sweater to each of the kawakas. And I have to say, like, I thought this was cute before, but I love seeing these sweaters on these little guys. The kawakas have a whole range of add-on costumes, so make sure when you're over at the Cat Scrappiness website that you check out what other occasions you can dress your kawaka up for. 
While those were drying, I brought in the three pieces of pattern paper that I chose from the package, and I will be using the November 2021 sheet load of cards for the layout today. So over there on the right, I do give the dimensions for a single card. That's what I'll be using. And if you want to download this free printable for yourself, I will link my video in that description box below. Now these slimline paper pads are perfect for this. I cut one piece that was five and a quarter inches tall and that basically left the five and a half inches tall I needed for the other pieces. I cut all of these down to those same sizes and then the smaller piece will actually end up being the background for my cards. So I just kind of put those off to the side while I cut down the larger pieces. The remaining pieces got cut into two strips that were two inches wide, which this was for, so it's perfect. I left the first one as is, and then I cut the second piece to three inches tall. Now, originally on the sketch, that three inch tall piece covered up an opening between a one inch and a two inch, but because of the size of this slimline paper pad, I could get both of those and I won't have to cover up any holes. I continued cutting until all of the pattern papers were ready to go. I brought in the 5x7 stitched rectangles die set from Cat Scrappiness and I used that smallest one and some scraps of off-white cardstock to get three pieces that later my kawakas will stand on. Off camera I did cut and fold my card bases and cut the cardstock mats for the smaller pattern papers. Up on screen now I'm just showing you how I put together one of the cards. If you are interested in seeing the full process you can always check out my YouTube channel which is linked in the description box below. My sweaters were now firmly adhered to my kawaka, so it was time to get these little guys added to their bases. For now, I'm just going to add a little bit of art glitter glue to their feet and place them centered toward the top of that stitched rectangle. These did sit off to the side again for about 5 minutes to dry before I moved on. Once those feet were glued firmly in place, I did add some foam tape strips to the back of each kawaka off camera. When I placed this on the card, I wanted to make sure that a little bit of the rectangle hung off the right edge. I just thought that looked more pleasing to the eye. Once I found a good place for my kawaka to go, I put the remaining two on the other card bases and then of course you know I need some sparkle. So I brought in my cat scrappiness embellishment organizer and I looked through my sprinkles and my pearl mixes and I ended up selecting this one. It is a white kind of holographic but there's also a nice silver tint to it. Up on screen now is the name of the pearl mix and down in the description box below I have a link to it. I placed three of the pearls onto the card front. Two were kind of a medium size and one was larger and I placed a little dot of glitter glue where I wanted each one of those to go. Now here's a look at all three of the cards after they had dried. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I put together today's cards. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. And until the next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.